Hey, uh, welcome in everybody. Uh, Chapadong's cheat sheet here. This is going to be a quicker version of the actual coaching, no coaching notes page. Uh, I'm going to try and show more of a process by which you can whittle down some of this tool because, um, you know, I mean, just to be dead honest with you, talking with Keith, uh, Keith is new to NHL and of course he's manning the domination station and talking back and forth with him helps me realize how complex this tool can be. Some of us that have been in hockey for a long time, this is all second nature. It's all stuff we understand. So I'm just going to try and periodically, a couple times a week, put out a video that helps you guys understand this tool a little bit better and maybe put it to good use. Uh, but let's just start with the very, very, very basics. Uh, because again, it can be very overwhelming when you look at all of these colors and all of these numbers and go, oh my goodness, what am I going to focus on? Um, we got to figure out the most simple, most um, most telling statistics for hockey. And I mean, of course, we all know hockey is a volatile sport. It just is what it is. Goals are like touchdowns in football. They're very, uh, they're not very predictive. They happen as a result of opportunity, but it's pretty hard to know when they're going to come. And I've got one little thing that if we get to it, that I will show you that will prove that to you. And um, I don't know, it might even blow your mind. Uh, but let's kind of figure out where do we start? What, what, what statistics, and this is another thing that I'm going to try and work on. I don't know if I am going to have to branch out and grab some more resources and look into things myself and, and carve time out of my already crammed schedule to do this or not, but I want to maybe do some testing on what statistics correlate most with fantasy points and make this as predictive as I can. But some of the entry research that I've done shows me a few key metrics we can focus on but even those in their best case scenarios are only consistent with bringing value about 50 percent of the time i mean like 48 percent of the time and if you can get them to 51 percent of the time i mean you are really really doing something problem there is that's only half the time and if i've got six guys in my lineup and three guys don't hit value and three guys do hit value Odds are I'm not doing very well, and that's as about as predictive as it's going to get. So there's a lot of game theory involved in hockey. There's a, that's why you see ownership so spread out, especially on big slates. You'll see ownership really low on some dudes that you would think are in really good spots otherwise, and that's just the nature of the beast. That's also why hockey is an amazing tournament sport. Cash games are great, and we can. But if you're only 50% predictive. I mean, even cash games are kind of a crapshoot. But tournaments, when it all comes together in the same night, can just launch you up a leaderboard. And game theory on shorter slates. You'll hear me talk about that the most. Game theory on shorter slates. You know, opening night, we had uh, Freddie Anderson as a minus 300 favorite. And I immediately said, stack against him. It's only a three-game slate. All of the chalk, well, all of the ownership is going to go to one place, and it's the heavy, heavy favorite. So what do we do in hockey? Being a random sport, stack against it. Why? Because it isn't going to happen half the time, maybe not even a third of the time. But when it does happen, we are all alone. And I love the double dip. When you're taking that Toronto goalie and I'm stacking the other team, not only am I not taking the, the Toronto goalie, you aren't taking the other team because you're taking the Toronto goalie. And you're not going to stack against your own goalie. So I've got those guys all to myself. And in the, you know, the, the less than likely circumstances that they do go off, I vault to the top of leaderboards. And it works with amazing frequency in hockey. Probably a little more often even than baseball, which definitely happens more often than football, which happens more often than basketball. So in terms of those types of situations, that's why hockey is such a great GPP sport. And on the bigger slates, you get bigger GPPs. Smaller slates, you still get some. I mean, I would recommend if you're new to hockey, play the dimes with me. I don't play a lot of volume anymore. Play the dimes. Two bucks a night for 20 lineups on DraftKings. I mean, it's really hard to go wrong and, and call that unaffordable. Save your bigger allocations for your bigger sports, like basketball and whatnot, and just have fun with hockey. Um, maybe, uh, maybe play the nickel contest when they pop up on FanDuel. Those are great. You don't even have to put 150 lineups in there. You can put 25 in there. You can put 50 
in there. Whatever, whatever you want to do, whatever your budget allows. I mean, just goof with it. But most importantly, do this while you're learning so that you don't dive in with money that you can't afford to lose and that destroys your bankroll for other sports just because you're chasing hockey and don't know what you're doing yet. So without with all that said, let's jump in and see where we go today and show you the basics of the research station. The opening page here, uh, the Today's Games page, of course it's current, always make sure it's current. You're going to see the top scores, you'll see the away team, you'll see the home team. I focus on this middle section pretty heavily. And I'm looking at the over-under, and I'm looking at the implied totals, I'm looking at the odds. I'm looking for minus 150 or better for the goalies that would be in consideration to me. When I see them, I kind of write them down. And I'm looking for implied team totals over 3.5, over 3.4, really. Because I'm finding that there's a threshold there of about 3.4 that leads to consistency in scoring for skaters. It doesn't mean that I'm going to completely avoid a 3.2, but it means those that are over 3.4, I'm going to key on. So I'm going to write down greater than 3.5, and I'm going to write down Tampa Bay, and I'm going to write down Toronto, because they're both at three, over 3.4. Right, And I'm going to focus on skaters on both sides of this game. So let's do that first, and then we'll come back and I'll show you a little bit more. So as I scroll down the list and wait for this to load, <laughs> Detroit, no. Montreal, yes. Montreal, 3.4. You know what? You could even write down the 3.5 or the 3.4 if you want. Scroll down a little. Well, and there's one thing here, the back-to-back -back number. A little later in the season, we'll worry a little bit about that, especially road back-to-backs that involve travel. Sometimes the teams come out a little flat, a little bit inconsistent. That would be worth testing as well. New Jersey's on a back-to-back, -back, but they've got a 3.4 today. Doesn't mean Edmonton's off the table, but I'm looking for the best of the best right now, and I'm thinking in terms of building about 20 lineups tonight. 3.2 is not quite high enough for me to want to write it down and really attack it on such a large slate. That's the key. 3.6, St. Louis goes down. 3.6 might even be the highest on the night so far. Interesting. You wouldn't think of St. Louis as just this big offensive juggernaut. 2.9 out of Nashville. 2.9, 3.1, Winnipeg, not quite there yet. But this Vegas number, this ITT, correlates very highly. San Jose correlates very highly with fantasy scoring historically not every night like i said if we get better than 50 percent consistency we're really doing something calgary dallas and we're probably getting towards the end of the slate here boston colorado that's a surprise that these you know it's this right here is because of dallas's defensive prowess it's really what that is So we're looking for a little better matchup. Vegas, Arizona. This surprised me. You'd think Arizona. I guess they were a little defensive last year. But you would think, that especially the start Vegas has gotten off to, and that's the end of the slate. So let's go back up. What we have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams already written down at over a 3.4 alone. Well, I took down two 3.3s. So five. Tampa Bay, Toronto, Montreal, New Jersey, St. Louis. Now, if I was running 20 lineups, I would probably just focus on those teams, unless I had a strong indication of some others. Now, am I leaving stuff out? There? I guess. But I'm just trying to put myself in the best position for whatever goes off to go off. I might have some one-offs in some other places and whatnot, but I'm looking at maybe running a Tampa Bay-Toronto stack and a Tampa Bay-Montreal stack and a Tampa Bay-New Jersey stack and a Tampa Bay-St. Louis stack, three four lineups each, and then turn around and run Toronto with Montreal, Toronto with New Jersey, Toronto with St. Louis, and then I would turn around and do... Montreal with New Jersey, Montreal with St. Louis, and then with New Jersey and St. Louis. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 or 9 stacks. So that's 2 to 3 lineups each at a 20 max tournament. You can cover those bases better in 150 max, but you know what? We haven't even touched on some of the other, you know, like San Jose is a 3.3 and Chicago's a 3.3. Is that really that much different than the 3.4? No, it's not. And then 3.2 for Pittsburgh, no, it's not that much different. They're all in play if you want them to be. So what I would start doing, if I was you, is I would write those premium teams down first. They're indicated by Vegas to have the greatest matchups. I'm watching for goals for and goals against, right? I want goals for to be green on the offense, and I want goals against to be red on the defense. 
So Tampa Bay is in a really, really good spot. I might put a little check mark by Tampa Bay. I look over here, 3.49 for Toronto is really, really good, but 2.7 is pretty good defense out of Tampa Bay. That might make me down a little bit on Toronto, even though they're hitting that 3.5 threshold. See where I'm going with this? Scroll down a little bit to the next offense. Uh, Detroit, Montreal. Montreal 3.0 is pretty neutral, but 3.32 out of Detroit is pretty bad. So I'll put a check mark by, I'll give Montreal a little boost, even though they're on the back-to-back. -back. I mean, maybe you'd take them down a notch there if you want. New Jersey Devils, 2.6 goals for versus, well, now this is a neutral type of situation. You've got a pretty bad number here, but you've got a pretty good number here. So they're kind of a wash. You know, New Jersey's not scoring a lot, but they're going up against a bad defense in Edmonton. Therefore, they should get a boost off of this number, which is probably why they're sitting on this number. You know, I don't know where I stand on that. I'll just leave it alone for now. Because I'm trying to get down to 20 max. That's question mark stuff, which is definitely GPP type stuff. Pittsburgh, go ahead and look at them, 3.2 versus 3.0. If you wanted to put Pittsburgh on the list because they're close with that 3.2, you've got a green light here and a red light here, so that matches up. That'd be okay. I personally think that without uh, Igveni Malkin, they're going to be in trouble. 3.6 here for St. Louis. Um, look at the goals for Under a 3, not great. A little pink, but a lot of red on Ottawa, giving up a lot of goals. So I will put a check mark over on St. Louis. That's a little bit stronger indicator here than this maybe is weak. So I kind of like that matchup. I'm also a St. Louis homer. But the minus 200 odds tells me that Bennington or uh, Jake Allen's getting the start tonight, and he's still a minus 200. I might even write that out to the side as one of the goalies that I'm going to consider. I should probably be looking at that as well when I scroll. So I'm going to scroll back up really quick. Minus 140 for Pittsburgh. Meh. Not super exciting. New Jersey either. Minus 170 for Montreal. Yeah, Kelly Price is going to get some consideration out of me. Minus 150 or stronger is going to get some consideration out of me. Now, in an ideal world, I would like it. I guess in hockey, one thing that you can correlate with, it makes sense is whatever your key stack is, whatever stack you think is going to blow up, let's say it's Montreal, then yes, definitely stack Carey Price with them. Why? Yeah, if they get into a shootout, that's okay. You need the win. You're not, going to, you're not going to win a GPP without the victory on your goalie. You don't need a shutout or anything, but you're not going to win without a victory. So you might as well get the victory. And if your stack goes off, then your goalie probably got the win. So they correlate. Scroll back down a little bit. Said New Jersey. Anaheim, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, just looked at them. Scroll down a little bit. 2.9 Nashville, probably not interested. Well, what's the odds? 130. Eh. 124. Eh. But Winnipeg, Green here. And their home record, their home splits are usually better than their road splits. So 3.29 here, uh, not exactly red out of Minnesota. That's why this number suppressed a little bit. It could have been a 3-3 or a 3-4 if they were playing a softer defense than Minnesota. Not that Minnesota's elite necessarily, but they're not bad. So I can look past them. 3.3 here, 3.5 goals for, and this is going back into last year. I don't think San Jose is off to a very good start this year, but 3.5 against Chicago. We were stacking against Chicago everywhere. So I might put a little check mark on San Jose and hope that San Jose comes out of it a little bit. I'm looking 3.26 for Chicago, 3.15. This game's a sneaky shootout game tonight. Green versus red, green versus red. That's a good shootout indicator. And um, San Jose struggling a little bit. So maybe some people will be off of that. Not that you worry about ownership on big slates in hockey necessarily anyway, but that would be an extra bonus if it's even a little bit lower than it should be. Making sense? So let's scroll down here. Calgary at a 2.7. I don't really want much to do with those. If they shoot out, they shoot out. I'm just trying to pigeonhole myself down to the best of the best. Boston, Colorado, same thing. There will be a lot of ownership in here. Probably more ownership than there should be tonight. Uh, Vegas. Arizona's not scoring at all. Vegas is tough on defense, so Arizona's probably out. That's why they're a 2.1. That probably brings thing is they're not I don't think they're really shooting a lot shot on goals against shot on goals for 30 that's low you'd like to see 34 35 36 
but the win in Vegas might be fairly secure. So even at a minus 140, it's not the number I'm looking for. I'll put Subban on the list. Put him on the list as a goalie of consideration tonight. And I guess that's really about it for goalies. I, I mean, if you wanted to open it up and take another couple of goalies, go for it. Okay, but let's end this as part one for walking through this sheet. And let's say that our offenses were originally Tampa Bay, Toronto, Montreal, New Jersey, St. Louis, San Jose, Chicago, because they're all around 3.4 implied team total. Our goalies are Carey Price, uh, Jake Allen in St. Louis, and Malcolm Subban, right? And that's enough to go on with uh, Domination Station to mix and match some lineups and get these offenses keyed in on. Okay, now upon further review, we were looking for goals for and then goals against. And these are season long numbers. If you wanted to look a little further in recency numbers, last 10 games get you about a month. So we're not there yet where this number is is accurate for just all of 2019, 2020 yet. I mean, this is obviously using last year. Things do change. But this is just one way to go about it as the season gets a little bit older. This will definitely help you in terms of knocking information out quickly but after the, looking at you know the green here and the red here we came up with toronto montreal st louis san jose chicago so that would be a toronto montreal stack one toronto st louis stack two Tor or, i'm sorry tampa bay tampa bay montreal one tampa bay st louis two tampa bay san jose three tampa bay chicago four there's four stacks and then I would run a Montreal, St. Louis, 5, Montreal, San Jose, 6, Montreal, Chicago, 7, St. Louis, San Jose, 8, St. Louis, Chicago, 9, San Jose, Chicago, 10. There's 10 stacks. You can do that for 15 lineups each in the optimizer. Yes, you're leaving a bunch of stuff off of the table. You can't cover all the bases. You know, you want to know how Bobby Wow... Uh, swept uh, first through sixth in that GPP. He sold out to the Tampa Bay Rays in baseball. And he hit. And when he hit, he hit everywhere because he had five, six, seven lineups going. That's how you do it in MME. You take some stands. You hope your stands hit. When they do, they push that whole damn core across the finish line and hopefully get you deep into the money. So this would be 10 stacks. If you're playing 20 max, it's only two stacks each. Fine. I would probably cut it down a little bit further. Find a couple of other plays to knock off of that list, and I would cut it down to where I probably only got about four stacks of about five lineups each, or maybe five stacks of four lineups each, something like that. And, and then the rest of the slate's dead to me. You know, that's just the way it's got to happen in, in, in hockey. If you want to get in, you can't have one stack of everything. You're just not going to do anything. So let's cut it off here. Let's make this upload this video for you guys to have something to look at tonight and then we'll come back we'll go into the players a little bit more specifically in the next video stay tuned